I already know what the best TV versus video is going to be in 2021. It's going to be the LG G1 Gallery Series TV versus the Sony A90J Masterclass OLED TV. And I'm going to tell you what I know about both OLEDs and then tell you if you should wait for these TVs or buy another one now. Let's do it. What's up, I'm Be The Installer, and I'm excited for 2021 TVs. It seems like there's definitely could be some cool technology coming out in another year or two, micro LED, quantum dot LED, but a lot of people love OLED TVs, and there are some great news in that front for OLED fans. Before I power through the video though, and offer up my opinions on both OLEDs, tell you which is better, if you should wait for them, make sure to subscribe to my channel below, ring the notification bell to be notified when I upload a new tech video. And while you're down there, smash the like button, show some love, spread the word. And if you wanna stay in the loop, follow me on Instagram and Twitter below, where I'll eventually be giving away some accessories and even TVs like I did for a friend at Christmas. So both LG and Sony look to be upping their OLED game for 2021. It's actually pretty exciting to see the news and the videos on these OLEDs. So I'll talk about the Sony A90J first, and then the LG G1 Gallery series, and a little bit about the C1, and then compare and recommend. The Sony A90J is the top Master Series 4K OLED for Sony in 2021. And it's been a minute since they made a Master Series TV. The Sony A9G has been solid for almost two years now. And if you had to ask anyone that owns a A9G what they could do to make it better, I'm pretty sure you get the same two answers from everybody. Improved brightness and HDMI 2.1 connectivity and the Sony A90J has both. So the improved brightness may be the biggest upgrade on both of these TVs that I'm speaking about today. The Sony A90J has a new processor for the year called the Cognitive Processor XR that is not only supposed to make improvements to the content, but to understand how a human sees and hears. As far as the sound quality goes, the Sony 8H OLED already had pretty decent sound from the screen around the bezel and this new A90J OLED is supposed to be able to do that, but with Dolby Atmos without any upward firing speakers by utilizing similar tech to bounce sound throughout your room. So that's pretty exciting. And regarding the new XR processor, I'll read it from Sony directly. Powered by the cognitive processor XR, the brain of the new Bravia XR, the television uses a completely new processing method that goes beyond conventional AI, designed to replicate the way humans see and hear. When we see objects, we unconsciously focus on certain points. Cognitive processor XR, powered by the cognitive intelligence, divides the screen into numerous zones and detects where the focal point is in the picture. While conventional artificial intelligence AI can only detect and analyze picture elements like color, contrast, and detail individually, the new Cognitive Processor XR can cross-analyze an array of elements all at once, just as our brains do. So it's exciting info and we'll see how much of an improvement they'll make on these TVs, but overall, a brighter OLED is what most people hear. No actual numbers, of course, but any substantial difference would be quite the game changer with the already great Sony OLED. And when it comes to OLEDs, black crush and clipping highlights are concerns. So I'll read this last shorter snippet from Sony again which is our cognitive processor XR cross analyzes data, enhancing pictures in the same way that the human eye focuses for real life color and depth. With XR OLED Contrast Pro, brightness is adjusted for higher peaks in glare and deeper blacks in shadows. No more details overwhelmed by shadow are lost in blown out highlights. So if you own an OLED or you're in the market for one, I'll tell you that sounds appealing for me who currently has an OLED from all three companies in the US that make OLED TVs. Sony was already pretty good at preventing black crush and not clipping highlights, so an improvement in this while increasing the brightness will be awesome. Again, the Sony A9G and then the Sony A8H in the smaller sizes already were really good TVs, and so Sony had to come up with something brighter than the previous years. And as stated, they have a new processor to make this jump and rumor to have a cooling system to keep the TV safe from burn-in. So it's really something to be excited for. They do plan to move outside of their accurate colors by offering a little extra for those that are the fans of let's say the elaborate colors, <clears throat> Samsung. But Sony wants to get some of that Samsung money, so they're gonna offer different modes where you can get the, both the filmmaker type look and the brighter, more mainstream consumer color wheel. And the other huge sticking point on the Sony OLEDs to date is the lack of HDMI 2.1. And so that also has changed from 2020 to 2021. The entire Sony lineup will have two HDMI 2.1 in 2021. That's a lot of twos. So now they'll have 4K at 120 frames per second on an OLED, 
which is something they've gotten roasted over for not having in 2020, and the eARC. But they're starting the year off with an asterisk that the entire 2021 lineup will have VRR and ALLM eventually with an update. At least that's what I've seen. And that may not sit right with people that have bought the Sony X900H, still expecting to get the VRR and ALLM updates almost a year now, so we'll have to see. All Sony TVs in 2021 are also gonna have the new Google TV platform. So now you'll have all kinds of movies and shows that will be organized in a comprehensive manner on this new platform. They will also have free channels like LG and Samsung already do, and more benefits over the cookie cutter Android OS of past years. One of the coolest things about Sony and LG on some models is that there's going to be an 83 inch OLED. Yes, the Sony A, 90J will come in 55 inch, 65 inch, and then a massive 83 inch TV. The little brother, the Sony A80J, will have the same sizes that the A9G did, which are 55, 65, and 77. And that's great because the A8H was only 55 and 65, and I got a ton of questions about why there was no 77 inch AAH. So does the 83 inch size make you as excited as me? Let me know in the comments. And lastly, Sony will have a backlit remote. I've been asking this for a while, and if you're paying a ton of money for some of these TVs, and most people are watching OLEDs in a darker room, everybody should be offering them with a backlit remote. So I'm very glad to hear about that. So the Sony A90J Master Series OLED sounds like a winner, right? But hold on, that's not to be outdone. LG has made some major waves with their new OLED lineup as well. Primarily, I'm talking about the G1 Gallery Series OLED, but in general, LG is making some waves with a smaller 42 inch OLED and a huge 83 inch C1 OLED. But let's get to the G1. So the LG G1 Gallery Series OLED has been on my mind since I saw LG release these names and model numbers for 2021 TVs. I was hoping that the G1 would have improvements over the LG C10 and G10, even though I love those two TVs. And the biggest jump in quality for LG is going to be this G1 Gallery Series OLED. If you don't know much about the LG Gallery Series OLED because you have either the LG C9 or C10, the G10 and now the G1 are basically LG's response to the Samsung frame, but in an OLED. And I've done a lot of videos on the Samsung frame. Feel free to check it out. But I'm just saying straight up, there is no contest when it comes to the Samsung frame and the LG Gallery series in terms of picture quality. The LG smashes Samsung there. But the thing that was a bit disappointing in 2020 was that the LG G10 was basically the same panel and quality as the C10. There was not a picture quality advantage in getting the G10 over the C10, which was significantly less expensive and therefore more popular and mainstream. So you were buying the Gallery or G10 just for the look over the C10. And the Gallery series is meant to sit flush on the wall to be able to pull out and turn a little and when pushed back the mount would be flush and go recessed inside the TV. A fantastic design, the thinnest OLED for a reasonable price, but this year the G1 is actually better than the C1. So let's get into why the G1 will replace the C series as the best 4K LG OLED in 2021. So the first thing that got me really excited about the LG G1 is that it has a new brighter Evo panel. Evo for evolution, I guess. Now the LG C1 OLED has the same A9 fourth gen processor that the G1 has, but not the Evo panel. So the new C1 will still have some upgrades over the C10 of 2020, but now the Gallery Series is the brightest LG OLED. Again, I'm not too concerned that they're not giving specifics on how much brighter. Some have estimated a 20% brighter panel to put it where the very popular Panasonic OLEDs are that aren't available in the US, but I'm just excited for what looks to be a solid improvement. The Evo panel comes with a new layer of green pixels boosting light and a cooling system to help reduce the possibilities of burn-in with such a thin panel. LG's processing is much different from Sony's and I like them both. Both have very good upscaling and very good motion that can be adjusted for your liking. But with the LG C10 having more black crush than the Sony or Vizio in 2020. I'm interested in their ability to handle those tones better in 2021 with this Evo panel and new generation processor. Now on top of the Evo panel, the LG is also getting an OS facelift to the new WebOS 6.0, which is good news, bad news, well, mostly good news. The bad news is you won't be able to hit the home button and have the pop-up come up from the bottom, which I have to say is the only way that we maneuver around the apps on the LG C10 but the new home area will have a full screen with a ton more options and features. So you'll get the robust atmosphere, 
a bunch of free channels to entertain you if you really don't have anything else to watch. And you can use the remote to move content from your phone through the NFC to the TV. And oh yeah, the LG Magic Remote has a facelift as well. Besides sending info from your phone to the TV, it also looks more premium than the previous plastic Magic Remotes. And it will have more apps having their own real estate on the remote, but you can still assign other numbers to apps and inputs. Overall, I'm in a better mental position with accepting this new remote, so I hope it doesn't disappoint. The LG G1 and C1 will have four HDMI 2.1, and all the gaming features that they had in 2020. And I can't stress enough through all the next gen gaming and even computer gaming issues that LG has been the most consistent brand for gaming. I always get a quick response from changing resolutions, fast changes from SDR to HDR content, and very little issues with the eARC connections to soundbars and AVRs. I expect LG will continue to lead with regards to connectivity. With Linus Tech Tips on the LG website, I'm gonna have to leave it there. If you don't think LG OLEDs are the best for gaming, talk to Linus. The G1, like the G10, doesn't come with a stand, but it does come with a mount. If you want a stand, you can buy one, but it would be a crying shame not to put this on the wall and have it sit up flush against the wall, maybe turn it here or there. And one similarity to the G10 that isn't awesome news is that they're only gonna have a 55 inch, a 65 inch, and a 77 inch LG G1 gallery series. So no 83 inch for the top OLED from LG, but the non-Evo panel will have an 83 inch instead of a 77 inch. So that's one drawback that could give Sony the edge for the top TV. But man, solid specs, style, and the LG G1 has me very excited. So I've seen some other great TVs. Samsung will have a cleaner QLED with mini LEDs, TCL with their mini LEDs. I'm excited for those things. And I'm sure there'll be others that try to compete as well. But I really love OLED TVs, and once you go OLED, you never go back. So which one of these top OLEDs will be the best TV of 2021? And which am I gonna get? Let's get that answered. After reviewing the features, sizes, new tech advances, it looks like the best TV conversation is gonna be harder in 2021. Both the Sony A90J and the LG G1 have brighter OLED panels, something that OLEDs have gotten knocked for in previous years. In 2020, the two companies were neck and neck with brightness, so it would be splitting hairs again in 2021 on peak brightness. It really may come down to which processor is going to reduce black crush and keep highlights from clipping, as well as which interface you prefer, Google OS or Web OS. Pre-calibration, I thought the Sony A8H edged out the LG C10 in picture quality, less black crush, a little more accurate colors out of the box, but post-calibration and tweaking the two TVs, I have to say that Dolby Vision and SDR content, as well as gaming, I felt the LG C10 edged out Sony last year just a bit. Whiter whites, slightly brighter, and amazing colors. So if the XR panel from Sony can really do what it claims regarding seeing content like the human eye and offer Dolby Atmos 5.1.2 without a soundbar, it's extremely hard to believe that the Sony A90J Master Series OLED won't be the top TV in the world. And with the addition of HDMI 2.1, it could finally equal the Sony OLEDs when it comes to gaming. Not to mention that they have a massive 83 inch OLED. But on the flip side, the LG G1 gallery series having the flushest look against the wall, well under 20,000, and with their new Evo panel that even the new LG C1 and even the 8K Z1 won't have, it's clear the LG G1 is now the top dog for LG 4K OLED. Now they already had HDMI 2.1, but with the new web OS and having four HDMI ports and now a brighter screen with improved color and contrast, I think there are a lot of LG aficionados licking their chops. And when it comes to gaming, for the most part, LG is proven. And Sony needs to show me the update. They still gotta get the VRR and ALL firmware issues knocked out. I don't see a lot of gamers being very confident in buying a Sony for those gaming features until they get the 2020 X900H VRR update finally out and working. And it's not gonna be great if their entire lineup rolls out of the box without full HDMI 2.1 features. But yeah, anyways, the LG G1 with the good gaming features will only be available in the 55 inch, the 65 inch, and the 77 inch, no 83 inch G1. So Sony has an advantage there with their new 83 inch OLED. And that's kind of weird because the Sony A80J, which will not have the brighter screen, is available in the 77 inch. So I'm not sure if the LG made the G1 77 inch because of its form factor or because they thought that the 83 inch would be more popular in the lower but still good C1. 
but Sony did it in reverse. They're offering the larger 83 inch in their top Master Series 4K OLED. And in 2020, I got a ton of questions about the 77 inch OLED versus an 85 inch QLED. People pining for weeks and months about that decision. And maybe it's gonna be easier now with having an 83 inch Master Series OLED and with both LG and Sony having brighter OLEDs. Size may be everything, so for many, the 83 inch Master Series Sony OLED is kinda tough to pass up. But I personally have been wanting to get an LG Gallery Series OLED for about a year now, so I may be leaning that way for a super low profile look on the wall. And regarding buying or waiting, the LG C10 and G10 would be easier buys now. I could see many people going for those 2020 models, they already have the gaming, the C1 won't have a major upgrade in brightness, so I would say if you need an LG OLED, go for it. But for Sony, both the A9G being two years old and the A8H not having a 77 inch size and neither having HDMI 2.1s, it seems like you've waited long enough, maybe hold off until those Sonys are available. And in either instance, if you're gonna get either one of these two new top TVs, the LG G1 or the Sony A90J, they're gonna be pretty expensive, so you, you better get your cash ready. But if you're looking to ball on a budget, you can definitely buy a TV now or look for the 2021 mid-level OLEDs with both Sony and LG will have lower models. So let me know what you think. Do you have any faith in Sony for gaming? And which one of these TVs is gonna be the best TV in 2021 or a different one? Comment below. Smash the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel. This will be a crazy fun year in 2021. Set the bell to be notified when I upload a new video. And just like that, we can all be the installer.